Hello everyone, welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday the 15th of November. Today's topic is edweb.net, a PD buffet. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, and Tammy Moore. Thanks Tammy for doing the closed captioning. Our special guests are a panel. Lisa Schmucky is the uh, CEO and Peggy will introduce Lisa after I asked the newbie question. Lisa's joined by Rachel Langenhurst, Michelle Lutala, Shannon Holden, and Peggy George. So the newbie question, which I will ask Lisa, is what is online professional learning and why is it important? Thank you, Lori. Um, it's so great to be here with everybody today. And um, you know, online professional learning is just the um, opportunity for us to use tools like online communities, whether it's EdWeb or Twitter um, or any of the networks that have developed, Classroom 2.0. Um, webinars are, I, I think, particularly a, a great way to engage communities and make the learning uh, be able to connect just like this is in real time. And I would say it's important because we just see the experience that happens with educators when they're able to connect with each other, the excitement, the fun, the passion, the sharing of ideas, and that in whatever we do in life, that's how we get better at what we do and how we make things better for those who um, who we're responsible for or connect with, and I think in particular for students to make the learning more fun for them, I think is very important. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, for kicking that off for us. And I am so thrilled to have this group of people from EdWeb joining us today. Uh, I have been a participant in EdWeb webinars for several years now, and I get an opportunity to actually talk about that a little later in the presentation. But I want to just tell you quickly about Lisa. I was so happy to meet Lisa, and she is the kind of CEO that you want to follow and you have so much respect for because she is totally engaged with people that participate in EdWeb. She follows up on conversations, she listens to the suggestions, and there have been so many great uh, additions to edweb.net as a result of our participation in it. And I had the privilege of having Lisa contact me after one of the webinars I was in and asking me if we could meet up for uh, uh, some refreshments at ISTE because she knew that I had been an active participant in the webinars and she wanted to meet me. Well, that was thrilling to me, and it happened. And we have continued on and are now very good friends and communicate regularly. But Lisa developed the idea and the vision for EdWeb after she saw how her daughter and her friends were using Facebook. And she saw how social networking could help teachers and all educators connect and collaborate, and so she launched EdWeb in 2008. Lisa graduated from Princeton University, and an education. she's an education industry executive with 30 years of experience in product development, database development, and marketing. She can see what a tremendous skill set she has brought to EdWeb, and she's able to use all of those things now to support all of us in our teaching and learning. So so I want to say welcome to Lisa and our panel, and I'm going to turn the slides over to Lisa to take over. Peggy, thank you so much. That was such a nice introduction. Um, and I, it really has meant so much to get to know you and to know Michelle and Shannon and Rachel who are joining us today and all the people who 
have joined EdWeb. I mean, it really is very much like you say. I mean, the, the ability to, to connect with each other through these networks, um, if we listen, if we participate, if we pay attention, it gives us the ideas to make it better all of the, t all the time. So um, I really appreciate that. And um, I, I think there's just no better um, way of showing how collaboration enables us all to be better. So, and in fact, the title of our show today, Join the PD Buffet. Um, PD stands for professional development. I did have somebody email me and ask after we sent out an announcement, what's PD? <laughs> so, PD is, stands for professional development. And that idea came from Rachel Langenhorst. Um, we had an interview with her where she talked about how she integrates EdWeb into the professional development at her school. So um, let's get started, because I think the fun part is really going to be when the panelists come on and talk. Here's a few pictures of us, and I love this one of Michelle and I together, because you know we started the network, as you explained, Peggy, based on seeing young people like my daughter and her friends use Facebook. But really, it took a few years to figure out the way to make it work for educators. And that came about through my having a chance to meet Michelle at a conference in 2010. So that was really just four years ago. And her presentation at this conference was so fantastic that it, it made me realize that using webinars could be a way to extend the opportunity for more people to hear what somebody like Michelle has to offer for um, fellow librarians and teachers and really any educators. So I'm really thrilled she's going to be um, our first panelist. And then Shannon Holden I met through EdWeb. I noticed a post that he made on the site, and I responded to him. And one thing led to another, and I learned a little bit about his passion for helping new teachers. And so we began with launching a community on EdWeb called New Teacher Health, which dovetails with some of the work that he had already been doing. And Shannon now presents three communities on EdWeb, New Teacher Health, Tech Tools, which is currently our biggest community. But Shannon, you've got people chomping at your heels who want to unseat you in your number one top dog position there. Um, and Shannon has also started a community on helping people to prevent bullying. And then Rachel and I met because in preparing for ISTE, we were asked to be on a live webcast from ISTE that Jeff Bradbury did for TeacherCast. And I sent an email out to our community and asked if anybody was going to be there and would like to participate with me. And Rachel said that she would love to. And it was really from hearing her talk on our panel at ISTE that I learned so much about what she's doing, not just with EdWeb, but just this whole idea of creating a PD buffet for the educators in her school district in Iowa. Um, and then our special guest is Peggy George herself, who um, is really our number one EdWeb all-star. Peggy, I really want to know, at some point, we have to keep track of how many EdWeb webinars you've attended. I think the number would just blow all of our minds away. But it's sort of one of those things that no matter what's happening in the day, if you sign into an EdWeb webinar and Peggy George is on, which she usually is, it just makes that day that much better. So I'm really happy to have her talk about um, all that she does in participating, not just in EdWeb, but in so many connected learning opportunities. So our EdWeb community has now grown. I'll give you a little bit of background about EdWeb and where we are. Um, and uh, I'll go through this a little quickly so we can, again, get to the conversations. But our community has now grown to over 100,000 members. That seems like a nice benchmark, but we want it to keep growing further. And uh, we provide a platform that any educator or school or educational institution can use to create public or private communities and use all of our tools on any device to collaborate for whatever that purpose might be. And when we first built this, you know, I think I, I expected more people to jump on and, and know how to use this and create collaborative communities or online professional learning communities. But we have really learned 
that educators and educational institutions lack a lot of the resources and the knowledge and the expertise to be able to make that happen, much as, much as they love the idea of doing it. And so what Michelle inspired when I saw her presentation, and she's going to talk about this a little bit more, is this idea of creating a professional learning community on AdWeb where we host free webinars, usually on a monthly basis. And that community becomes this really great learning resource center. Um, free webinars, everything's archived. We post quizzes with the webinar archives, so anybody can take that short quiz and download a certificate. And those who attend live, which is really the most fun of all, like we're on live today, everybody loves to be um, in real time with each other, you get emailed a certificate for that. Um, and the food analogy um, doesn't just happen with a PD buffet. We've had some educators talk about snacking on a webinar. We usually do them in the late afternoon, Eastern time. So they are sort of like a perfect late afternoon snack for professional development. Um, what's next here? This is just a little bit of a visual um, because I like to try to imagine when you're online, one of the things is we can't easily see each other. Um, and our average, on average, we're getting about 300 educators on average to attend live in our webinars. So if it were a live presentation at ISTE or any conference, you'd be looking at a room of people, you know, of about this magnitude. But actually, the online events, I think, are even more engaging. When I go to a session like this now in real time, you know, I'm frustrated because I can't connect with everybody in the room and, and post questions to the presenters. So I've come to actually prefer the online connectivity to the real time environment. And Peggy wanted me to try to give you a little bit of a feel for what the chat is like. And, you know, Peggy, this is one from, uh, oh, Michelle, this is yours. This is from uh, your presentation back in May, the 50 apps in 50 minutes, the A side, and where you ran through so many different ideas about different apps that teachers and librarians could use, and the chat was on fire. And people were going back and forth talking about what they had used and how they'd used it. So, you know, Remind 101 is a way for the admin of a building to blast info to teachers. Remind 101 for parents. Remind them the day before their child's library day is the less forgotten book. So it really reinforces um, not just the information the presenter's giving you, and I tell you, Michelle was so impressive with how many apps she knows and how many different ways she told people you could use them, but in the chat, everybody was supplementing that with all of their ideas, too. And I, I love this down here at the bottom, excellent resources. It was like attending FETC in Florida, but with no travel, although some of us in colder clients probably would like to go there um, in January. Um, this is just an example of the certificates that we give for attending a live session uh, or watching a webinar. And we do think that um, we know that giving credit, uh, giving credit where credit is due to, to educators for participating in this, all of this is pretty much above and beyond, and that's important. And we are working to compile information on all the states. It's pretty time consuming to understand where, which states are giving credit for EdWeb certificates. And there are states that are doing that. And there's certainly many schools or districts that are giving credit for PD hours for our certificates. We're getting recognized more and more in research and books that are published. And, you know, EdWeb's just one of a number of more personalized, self-directed ways in which educators can engage in, in professional uh, development, professional learning. So we are really, really proud that we are one of the solutions. Uh, Growing Schools is probably the first book that we were mentioned in, and Michelle wrote a chapter in that book about um, her experience launching the emerging tech community on EdWeb for librarians. So she can talk about that a little bit more when she comes on. We now have over 35 professional learning communities that are all built on the same model of building a community on a topic in education, um, hosting free webinars. Many of these are supported by both nonprofit or for-profit organizations. 
we work very hard to coach the for-profit companies that this is not about selling, that this is really an opportunity for all of us to work together as colleagues, um, to improve teaching and learning, that the companies can play such a valuable role in sponsoring and presenting valuable professional learning information. They get the contact information from the educators who participate in the programs, and then the members of, you know, the educators get the free professional learning. So we think it's, it's a win-win combination. So I would like to invite Michelle to come on and talk a little bit about her experience. Um, it's just, it's been such a, it's changed my life to know her. Sometimes I wonder if I hadn't walked into her session on the last day uh, of COSIN, whether or not some of this would have actually even happened. And we get together now as often as we can in New York City and have a good time. We're sitting on the balcony of La Bonne Soup, um, having a really nice day in New York this past summer. So I took this picture of her. So Michelle, come on. Well, hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm really honored to be here. And um, it's, exciting to, it's exciting to present a webinar that is presented by Lisa <laughs> and Peggy. This is a real, this is actually really nice. I get to sit back and just sort of chime in where, where, when needed. Um, and this is a reversal of what's going to happen on Wednesday. Um, I'm, I, you know, this has been sort of a transformational experience for me on so many levels, and I, I'm so pleased that, that Lisa found me. And it's a great story. I love this story because, um, you know, it's, it's a classic example of how you can turn your, your failures can turn into some of their greatest, great, your greatest ach achievements. And um, Lisa found me, yes, on the very last session, on the very last day of a very long conference. And um, I was in a very small room, tucked away in a really remote corner, and I thought no one would show up. And shockingly, 30 people came to the session. And it was one of my first major conference presentations, so I was a little bit nervous. And believe it or not, my computer completely crashed. I mean, really, like, dead crashed in the water, like, gone. Um, and I tried to reboot it, and, you know, can you imagine I'm nervous? Um, I'm sweating. And somebody finally shouted out in the audience and said, you know, just tell us what you do. And I did. And I, you know, I knew I had six points to cover, and I covered all six points without slides, without a computer, and I just talked through the whole thing. And um, I, I think the audience must have liked it to some degree, or at least Lisa did, because she came up to me afterwards and said, you know, I had a thing, and I think what we need is some continuity from month to month, something to bring people back, to re-engage them um, with new learning and uh, personal connection. And I said, well, that sounds great. And I thought I would never hear from her again, but I did on the bus ride home. We were in D.C. On the bus ride home, I, I, looked, up, I, I looked up Ed Webb, and, um, and I found it, and I signed in, and I set up an account. And we were in touch with them a couple weeks, and over the next couple of months, we sort of formulated a plan for how this was going to unroll and how we were going to do this. Um, and it's been such a transformational experience for me. One, because I, 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 just, I love working with Lisa. She's amazing. Um, she's got an amazing staff. The folks who, you know, the folks who I, I, I'm in touch with at EdWeb who really sort of keep me on track and manage the, the chats and manage the webinars um, and keep everybody informed when folks are, you know, coming in from around the world. Very often we have bandwidth connectivity issues. They let us know how many numbers we have coming in or how many people are registered. And, um, when it is and is not probably going to work to run a video, which um, lately the numbers have been pretty high and we haven't been able to do that. But we have a great community and a great portal in which to post those videos sort of as an anticipation of what's going to come out. So just because we can't run the video during the webinar itself, we have this beautiful opportunity to, to be able to post it within the community so folks can see it ahead of time. They can come in prepared. They know what you're going to talk about. And that's really just one more. It's like sort of another cherry to add to the Sunday, so to speak. Oh, we're still on the food <laughs> thing, aren't we? Um, so, so that's been great. The, the, the part that's really important, and I think this gets lost on the audience, and I really can't underscore this enough, is that the commitment to doing a webinar every month um, pushes me to new places in my learning. So, so the fact that we are connecting, and I think this does this for the participants too, but I think that we all 
become better at what we do and more reflective about what we do because we have these ongoing conversations and we know we can come back to it every month. And even if we don't sort of say, hey, how'd you do on, you know, your mobile app development last month, there is sort of a mental checklist like, oh, it's time for the webinar again. What have I accomplished? What have I learned? What am I doing now? What are we going to think about next? Um, and that really keeps my mind super, super hyper engaged with trying to be innovative, trying to come up with new plans, trying to think about new ways of doing things. And I think I'm a better, not only educator for it, but I think I'm a better person for it. I'm a lot more curious. Um, and I think that the audience really also has that similar kind of a thought process around, around this continuous coming back to the buffet. You know, so I think that's interesting because I think a lot of the presenters, I sometimes don't talk about that part, but I think a lot of the presenters almost get addicted to it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, it's work. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. and, it, it, and, and people say that all the time. Well, wait, how do you find time to do it? But it's like, it's part of my practice at this point because, mm. you know, I'm going to do teacher evaluation in three days. Well, guess what? My teacher goals are due this month, and that just you know, it sinks beautifully. And, you know, if, if you're taking from what it is that you're doing in your practice and you're presenting that and there's a real connectivity there, sometimes I feel guilty that I'm not introducing more work that's being done out there, but that's much more challenging in lots of ways and it's, it's not necessarily as reflective or as well known as what it is that I'm doing myself. So um, lots of ways the webinars kind of drive what it is that I'm going to focus on this month, but invariably it touches my students and my practice and my teaching and learning. You know, you mentioned something which is um, our team, which I'm, I'm so proud of. They, they really awesome. are incredible in the way they help people do this. And, you know, it, one of our favorite things is to help an educator who is doing something really unusual and innovative but may never have presented to their peers to be able to use this format to present. That's our favorite thing to do. And the team makes it easy for them. And it's so wonderful to see somebody come in and be nervous mm -hmm. in the beginning and in the practice session and then afterwards feel so good about having done it. And that raises a really good point. Um, you know, I, I think we all know this, that, you know, con budgets are tight. Conference funding has been scaled back since 2007. Um, frankly, at this point, travel is a real challenge for me on many levels. Just, it took me 20 hours to get back from Houston this summer. Um, mm -hmm. That was one trip. And, and, you know, the idea that, you know, literally I can run out of the gym, come back here and, and be online talking to people around the world, that's amazing. That's such a powerful tool and we can get, our, it enriches our lives in so many ways. Yeah. And, and I also really want to thank Follett because um, they, you know, supported this idea and this community that Michelle and I started together when it was only an idea. Um, Michael Campbell was the director of marketing and we met at a conference, you know, just about a month, Michelle, after we met, and, or a month or two, and I, I told them the idea that we kind of sketched out on a napkin practically. And um, he gave us support right in the beginning and said, well, let's just try it and, and see what happens. Um, they have sponsored the community and you ever since, um, and EdWeb ever since. And I, I think finding um, partners in the industry who help and support this is, is really um, the only way we can make it free. And that's a really good point. And they have been, so they're, they're, and the, you know, one of the things that I think um, could potentially complicate things as if they really drove a lot of the programming, but they really don't. It's a very hands off, you know, we know we want to support your profession and that's why we're doing this. And I think that that's a really beautiful relationship and that's exactly what we're hoping to achieve and we were able to do that and, and, they, and they respected on it that and we are so, yeah. so deeply grateful for their support. And we've continued to do it with Marcom. Actually, um, Britannica Digital is probably our most recent uh, client, and um, it's wonderful to have everybody thinks about Encyclopedia Britannica. I think they're, wow, is it 100 years old, something like that? And, um, yeah. and now, you know, everything's online, and so it's an opportunity for them to connect with educators about their digital opportunities, digital resources. 
And you know, one of the things that I still love about our first session is that we were somebody posted to the chat, gee, can I get credit for this session? <laughs> and we were like, oh, what a great idea. Let's see if we can do that. And and it happened. And I think that that's a real selling point for EdWeb is that the audience participants, they all, every session we offer, somebody says, wait, can I get credit for this? How does this work? Yeah. Um, somebody doesn't know that. So it's important to underscore that. Well, and I should probably say that, um, so we said, I said, great. I said, well, what does that look like? And um, so the librarian said, well, I could send you a copy of our certificate. And I said, that would be good. <laughs> so we, uh, our certificates are based on the design of that certificate that we were emailed four years ago. <laughs> and we said, OK, we can do this. Um, so yeah, the, the, the contributions and the suggestions from the community have enabled us to do what we do. And they also help product development for the sponsoring organizations, which is also an important point to make. Because I hear, I see Peggy is saying, you know, you don't feel like they're actually yeah. driving the programming. On the other hand, they are actually, they're really engaged listeners in those programs. And they really do hear what's being said. And they take that to product development and think, hey, you know what, if we have this many people who want this one thing, then we should be thinking about that in terms of product development. So I like, I like the fact that it's sort of a give back. Um, and that actually has a lot to do with some of my previous experience, which was in product development. And sometimes I think it was actually an advantage that I was never a teacher, although I had thought about wanting to do that, because I'd be in meetings and companies where somebody would say, well, you know, I taught fifth grade, and I, so I know the answer to this. I know, I know what teachers need. And, and I could never say that, because I never did teach. And so... To me, these kinds of solutions were so important um, because I don't think that anybody in um, the organizations that are producing the products and services these days can say that they know what's going on in schools and they need a way to know that better. Yep, exactly. So should we have Shannon come on now for a little while? And we, we can come back and open this up to everybody later in the show. But let's That's bring Shannon thing. on. Hello? Hi, Shannon. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you, Michelle. By the way, thank you so much. That was great. It's such a pleasure. I always talk to you, but it's kind of nice to talk with you in this context with an audience. And now, Shannon, we met on EdWeb. You posted something, and I responded to it, and that's history. Yes, that was uh, four years ago, 2010. And you um, have been, you're an assistant principal in Republic Middle School in Missouri and have been connecting with so many educators on EdWeb. In fact, I think I've only realized just recently how many of our members reach out to you, not just through the community, but personally for help and advice. And you're there for them. Yeah, I really try to do that, Lisa. Um, and it's, it's kind of a, really was not a passion of mine uh, as recently as five years ago. Uh, but what I found was I was losing a lot of my staff members. Uh, we would go through all of the, um, gosh, time and, and money invested in bringing new people into our school and trying to get them into a classroom and get them to the point where they felt comfortable doing what they were supposed to do. And I just read an article one time that it costs, uh, you know, $20,000 um, to bring a new teacher into the organization. And the way that schools are losing money is that we continue to lose our young people who come in and try to teach. We just don't seem to be able to equip them with the information and the techniques and the instructional strategies and the technology that they need in order to be successful. And they try for two or three years, and they struggle, and they feel like they're not being su supported. And then they end up um, you know, checking out of the educational profession and going and finding another job somewhere else outside of the educational profession. And, and uh, it's basically a 50-50 proposition when you're bringing people into education. So I said, this is ridiculous. Somebody has to do something uh, to try to, to reduce the number of people who feel this way. And so um, 
luckily we met and uh, and the new teacher help community was born and uh, I just feel like uh, from the feedback I'm getting, I feel like a lot of people are benefiting from it. That is, you know, that is so great and so important. I think some of the things you've told me is the, um, the real reluctance of some new teachers to even admit that they need help. Um, and I mean, even in an online community, it can be difficult, but at least you can participate and listen and and try to get some information in a way that maybe is not as threatening um, as right. admitting uh, to somebody face to face. Can you maybe talk to that a little bit? Sure. Uh, one great thing about these communities is you are in control of the level of participation that you would like to uh, put forth in the community. You can be uh, a fly on the wall if you want to and just listen to all of the great ideas. Uh, you can download the, the the chat and read the chat on your own computer that day or maybe the next day or a week later. Or you can uh, contribute to the chat. You can, and I always invite folks who are on my webinars to ask to become my friend on EdWeb so that they can have access to me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, I get tons and tons of questions from people who are afraid to ask their boss at their own school because they're afraid, you know, if I tell my boss that I don't know how to differentiate instruction, you know, he's going to think that I'm weak and, and I'm going to I'm going to be put on some sort of a list of, of weak teachers or bad teachers. So, um, you know, they ask me these questions and uh, I really feel like it's a great way for them to learn about things without having to ask their boss. And, and put themselves in a position where they think they're admitting that they're not good at something. So um, it's, it's been great in the new teacher help uh, community. And then uh, the tech tools community uh, is kind of the same thing. People don't want to go to their technology integration specialist and say, I don't really understand how to do uh, this, that, or the other thing. I don't know how to do a formative assessment with my kids. Um, I don't know any free resources online where I could use them in my classroom and, and help to engage students. And so uh, getting on EdWeb and, and listening to webinars and, and picking up ideas and then trying them out themselves in the comfort of their own home and then bringing that knowledge to school with them has really been beneficial for them. Um, Shannon, I think one of the really great things about tech tools, I mean, you've done so many of them now, and I think that you make the technology seem, you know, very accessible. The way you present, um, you you make it very easy. Your your explanations are just great. But you also very clearly talk about how something might be used in a classroom um, or in school, uh, and, and address any of the issues that might come up, whether it's about privacy or, you know, how you access it. And I think you really make these tools so accessible to the teachers who maybe have not not been, have the uh, uh, nerve to try some of them or, or have felt intimidated by the tool. Yeah, that's true. And uh, basically uh, what I found, and this was just through trial and error, um, the only way that teachers are going to implement any type of technology, it has to meet three criteria. It has to be free, uh, and if it's not free, it has to be really, really cheap, or maybe the district has to pay for it. So criteria one is the technology has to be free. Uh, number two, it has to be very easy. Uh, the implementation of it has to be very easy, and uh, what I've found is if I can put together a step-by-step -step list of instructions for someone to follow, uh, the criteria is if my 76-year-old father could follow the directions and do whatever it is that I want the teachers to be able to do, if uh, I test it out on him and if he's able to do it, then I know that pretty much anyone can do it. So free, uh, easy to implement um, with with step-by-step -step instructions. And then the third criteria is is this particular piece of technology or platform or tool, 
is it going to save the teacher time and or effort? Because um, you know, in education, we keep putting a marble on someone's plate, and uh, the the one marble that you put on there doesn't seem like it's very burdensome, but you know, we're continually adding marbles to the teacher's mm. plate, and after a while, the plate gets really, really heavy every time we add more marbles. So when I'm adding a marble to someone's plate, I always like to be able to uh, tell teachers that, you know, I'm adding this marble to your plate, but in reality, it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of effort. And so uh, that's when when I do that, uh, that's when I get the most feedback, the most positive feedback from teachers is, you know, I I tried live binders and it's really saved me a lot of time organizing all of the things that I find online. Or, you know, I'm I'm using Edpuzzle to do a formative assessment with my students, and because the platform grades uh, what the students do online, it's really saved me a lot of time in grading and entering things in the grade books. So. Uh, they really, really appreciate uh, all of the tools that we present to them. So it's been a great experience. And I think too, Shannon, that, that in particularly for something like tech tools, uh, the archives are great for all of the programs that we have. But when you're helping people use a tool like that, many of the people who are in your webinars will say, oh, this is great. I'm going to go back. I'm going to watch this again um, so I can really get this. Um, and so all those archives are there. They don't have to worry about, I mean, often I know people say, I'm going to try this tomorrow. You know, so they do feel that they're, they can immediately do something new. But then it's also there if they, you know, didn't, or weren't able to remember it and want to see right. those instructions again. Exactly. Exactly. That's one thing that people uh, always comment on is, gosh, I, I got about halfway into it and I got stuck. Mm -hmm. uh, so all I have to do is go back on EdWeb and and watch that portion of the webinar again, or uh, a lot of times. I'm messing you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's exactly right. A lot of times um, they will um, be able to download step by step instructions from the uh, not only the archives but the uh, the place where we keep a little library of PDF documents and Microsoft Word documents, so people can just go and print it out and. I've I've had teachers tell me I printed out your instructions on how to use Edpuzzle and I just printed it out and stuck it on the wall right next to my computer. And uh, <laughs> whenever I get stuck, I just go and look at the little page there, and it walks me through the process. That's so great, Shannon. I just can't thank you enough for the fact that we've met and that you've presented so many amazing webinars on AdWeb and continue to do that and support our community. So um, it's really been life changing for me. So I really, really appreciate it. Well, thanks, Lisa. It's been great, and uh, I just hope we can continue to uh, to help teachers and and try to get people comfortable with not only um, presenting uh, effective lessons in the classroom, but integrating technology and and uh, you know the numbers are exploding for EdWeb, and mm -hmm. uh, it's catching on all across the the country and the world, and I just want to be along for the ride. So thanks a lot, Lisa. All right. Well, let's have Rachel come on. And um, hi, Rachel. Hello there. Hi. So Rachel, I'm all those in advance the hotel room sketchy internet, but I'm doing okay so far. I know. Yeah, I saw you going in and out a little bit. So Rachel is in a hotel. Um, because her son is in the state football championships, and she's on the webinar here with us uh, today. So thank you so much for making time to do it. And um, Rachel and I met at ISTE, and uh, you know, Rachel and I didn't meet in the same way that Michelle and Shannon and I have met in producing programs on EdWeb, but she is a user of EdWeb in the PD program that she runs for Rock Valley Community School District. And I heard her talk about some of the ways in which she's doing it. And that's just another great opportunity for us to learn how EdWeb is valuable and how it fits into um, a part of a larger program as well. What, what's EdWeb's role in everything you need to support your team with? So Rachel, talk with us a little bit um, about your perspective. 
Well, you know, EdWeb has really provided us with a tremendous opportunity to take lots of information with lots of different teachers and actually have them be able to get what they need when they need it. Being in a smaller district, it's always so hard because we have a department of one in some instances. And they really can't have that other person to collaborate with within the classroom. So they need to be able to extend outside the school walls. EdWeb has really allowed us that opportunity because not only can they be in a community or a professional learning network with people that are like-minded and in the same content area, but they can also then watch webinars, glean information, and bring that back into our, our district as a whole when we discuss what we've learned. It's been absolutely tremendous. That is so that is so great. And I love the way you talk about it being a PD buffet because um, mm -hmm. I know in the interview that we did, one of the things you touched on is that professional development for teachers hasn't always had the greatest reputation for being exciting and enjoyable and personalized <laughs> and self-directed and, and all exactly. of that, right? Exactly. I mean, we all have joked, anybody that's been in education has joked about professional development and how it's just so boring when they try to do the one size fits all PD. So we really just coined that term PD buffet because it's just that. It's everything you could possibly want. You just have to step up to the to the buffet to get it. And it's it's great for us because we really have so many different teachers that have different abilities. And in any district, I mean, really, you've got teachers who have, you know, new to tech tools, for example, or who are extremely tech savvy. And in my, in my line of work, being an instructional coach and a technology integrationist, it's sometimes just better for that teacher to set them in front of a webinar and say, look, take a look at this, see what you, what you find, and let's come together and discuss how we can use it in your classroom. That way, if they need to watch it 10 times, they can do that in the comfort of their own home, sitting in there in their PJs with their coffee if they want to. Yeah, I do think, I mean, I'm not in the schools in the districts, but I could imagine that, you know, there's, there's either sort of a book club idea where you could, for whatever reason, want everybody in your school to, let's say you're going to do a one-to-one -one initiative. Maybe you want everybody in the school to watch something on that topic mm -hmm. so they're all a little bit more familiar or more of a free range opportunity where, hey, everybody go out there and just watch something that's of interest to you and then bring that back. And let's talk about how anything that you watched might make our, make something that we do better. Yes, and another thing that we do, I teach some graduate credit classes for our teachers so they can get their, their professional development and, and continuing ed right in our building. And one of the things that I love to do is just like you said, Lisa, provide um, webinars that you guys have offered that seem to be uh, in line with an initiative that we're doing so that everybody gets on the same uh, page, so to speak. And we discuss them, we talk about them, they're part of our class, we integrate it with everything else that we're learning, and it's been incredibly valuable. And we've had a lot of teachers who come in who are brand new to webinars who just after being walked through it are completely comfortable and have, have run with it. As a matter of fact, coming up soon we have our individualized PD day where every teacher has a slide in a Google presentation and they write down exactly what webinars they're watching, they provide the link to it, why they're doing it, how it will benefit students, and we can all see everyone else's slide. So not only can we share our own information, but we can click on another teacher's information because it might look interesting and watch a webinar that they, they did because we happen to think it might fit us as well. I love that. And I think you also talked about sharing, like how the, having your teachers um, note in a Google Doc what they're watching in the comments and then sharing it with the principal and actually making it part of a teacher evaluation program. Yes, the accountability factor, you know, while it's not exactly a checking up on them system, it's still a great way for our administrator to know exactly what you're doing when you're doing it without having to peruse the school and interrupt what you're doing. So Google Docs and Google presentations have been actually great for doing just that. And by sim something as simple as sharing out to our entire district, because we are a Google Apps school, so that's actually a very easy thing for us to do, yeah. um, everybody has access. And it's tremendous because we are not only learning our own information, but we're sharing it out with others and being able to get information from others as well. And I think one of my favorite things that you talked about is um, 
how you love it when they come back to you with things they've discovered. Absolutely. It's not just me dishing out all stuff all the time. I want to be able to glean information from them. And watching a webinar, you know, I, I watch as many as I possibly can, but my time gets limited as well. And I oftentimes have a giant list of archived resources I need to go back to. And teachers will come in and say, I just watched this webinar. It was awesome. You have to check it out. And they'll either share, me, share with me the link or they'll go ahead and just tell me about it and we'll have this great conversation. So as an instructional coach, it's so neat to see it because we're learning together. I'm not the, always the one that's providing all the information. It's just a shared partnership. That's so great. Well, you know, I could talk with everybody all day. I do see that we're getting close. To, I suspect that we want to close within an hour. Um, Rachel, it's been just so fantastic to meet you and to continue to connect with you for opportunities like that. And I really appreciate the chance to learn from you and, and from that learn how we can make EdWeb better all the time. Thank you so much. It's been just a pleasure. All right, Peggy, would you like to come on as our special EdWeb All-Star? And this is a picture of us from ISTE. As you said, how we got together there um, and had so much fun. Thank you so much for including me in your awesome panel. Oh. I'm usually I'm usually behind the scenes in these shows, but you um, right up front. This is so much fun. And honestly, I'm going to cut a number of the things I was planning to say because you all have expressed them so well. And I've already told you kind of how I got involved with Ed Webb and, and started participating. But many people ask me, why do you participate in so many of these webinars? I mean, really, you're retired? And why do you need to do this? Well, I don't do it because I don't have anything better to do with my time, but it's because I choose to spend as much time as possible every single day learning and sharing with other passionate educators. I I will always have that passion for education. I was a principal for 30 plus years and um, taught at the university uh, with pre-service teachers for another bunch of years. And I really care about education. And so that's why I got involved in Classroom 2.0 Live. But mm -hmm. the, through Classroom 2.0, I learned about so many other online opportunities, whether they're webinars, they're virtual conferences. There are just so many places you can go to to learn and share. And it's that opportunity in EdWeb that is so valuable that you meet people in every session who share their Twitter IDs and they share their class blogs and their wikis and things that their students have created. And all of those chat logs are saved in the webinar um, archives. So you can go back and find all of them. And, and I have learned about so many, not only new tools, but the real value is learning about what you can do with those tools. And that's the nature of the presentations. They're practical. They're down to earth. And like Lisa said earlier, they're things that you can use the next day in your classroom. I don't have a classroom, but I sure do know a lot of teachers who do. And I continue to stay connected with them. So I use Digo to bookmark things and many other kinds of tools. I always use live binders, but he used lots of tools to share those resources with teachers who are looking for ways to do that. You know, EdWeb has so much participation in their webinars that it's not uncommon to see 100 to 200 to 300 people joining in those webinars. And that's why it's such an amazing connection experience. And I love that we can download the PowerPoint slides from 
uh, many of the presentations because that means we can take it back to our schools and actually do a similar kind of presentation, picking out the parts that are relevant to them and using that to jumpstart your PD. And people also ask me, well, how do you keep up with all of this? Well, when you join learning communities on EdWeb, you get email updates with links to the recordings, your link to your PD certificate, and announcements of um, upcoming shows. But my favorite way is one that was shared earlier, uh, and, and I know Maureen said in the chat that this is what she does. I subscribe to their Google Calendar, so every single webinar appears automatically in my own Google Calendar. If you click on that link, you get all the details about the webinar. And it's the link to log in, the description of, of the topic, and all about the presenter. And it makes it so easy to quickly access those webinars. Uh, it's one-stop shopping. And if it happens to be a topic I'm not interested in, or something else might be going on in my life, <laughs> I know that I can go back to it later and find the webinar archives and listen to the recording and check out the PowerPoints and check out the community. So you can do the same thing with Classroom 2 Live. You can subscribe to our um, Google Calendar and know what's coming up every week on those shows. So that's my favorite tip for saying how you can get involved and kind of manage the flow of all these great opportunities. But I have one more favorite way to share the great people and resources I learn about in these experiences, and that is Rebel Mouse. Now, I don't know if any of you have used it or even heard of it, but whenever I tweet, retweet, or favorite a tweet, they all appear in my Rebel Mouse. And it's this fabulous visual representation of everything I'm sharing. And um, anyone can follow your Rebel Mouse, but it's a great way just for me to go back and find the resources that I learned about through a tweet or through any of those resources. So my feeling is there is just no better way to be a connected educator continuously learning with other educators than to start actively participating in the EdWeb.net webinars and learning communities. And so with that, I'm going to pass it back to you, Lisa. Peggy, thank you so much. That is so great. And I really, having you a part of our communities and all our events just, I mean, makes it the welcoming uh, community that it is. I mean, that's, it's the people that make the difference, right? And um, so it's, it's, and I love, I've been reading the chat too while, while you've been talking. Um, for how, how much it just adds to everyone. And I'm going to sign up for Rebel Mouth. So um, what do I have here? Ah, so this is kind of like a fun testimonial that goes along with the buffet theme. EdWeb is better than sliced bread. I think that's one of my favorite testimonials of all time. We get such incredible comments um, about what we're doing on a regular basis. And uh, there is just such a personal quality to the way people talk about it that we love. And it means a lot uh, to us and to our team. I'll tell you, it's not always easy to host these webinars and to get everybody together and prepared and ready to go. And for our team, at the end of those webinars, when the thank yous come in, they kind of take a deep breath and let it all out and, you know, feel really good that they are for all that hard work. Um, and sometimes a lot of stress in dealing with online events. Um, getting getting the kinds of thank yous that we do. And thank you, we don't have a lot of time to talk about this today, but we are in December launching a new premium service called EdWeb TV, and I want to reassure everybody that EdWeb.net and everything we do will remain the same and everything will be free on EdWeb, but a lot of educators are really asking us for an easier way just to watch our webinars. 
And so EdWeb TV is going to be a way to view them on demand, like a Netflix for $9 a month, access to all the webinars, easily searchable. Everything's going to be correlated to the National Professional Development Standards. And we're going to have information on, on PD requirements for everybody's state. So there'll be more to tell you about that, you know, as time goes on. But we're always trying to find ways to make the content easier and more accessible and, um, and very affordable for everybody for what we do. So there are kind of three ways that are easy if you haven't become a member of EdWeb to join in the buffet. One is to join one of our professional learning communities. If you go to our website, edweb.net, there's a link up at the top to join communities. There's also a link to register for a webinar. We often call them an ed webinar because uh, of the way we do them. So just join one of those and come see if you like one of our events if you haven't attended. And we post about everything that we're doing on Twitter at EdWebNet. And let's see, what else did we have? Just a big thank you. Thank you, Peggy, Lori, and Tammy for hosting the show and giving us an opportunity to talk about what we do. Um, with your community, and really so many thanks to Michelle and Rachel and Shannon and Peggy for being here today. It's, it's really been great. Thank you all very much, and I look forward to seeing you all more online. Thanks, Lisa, and thanks everybody else for the wonderful show today. I did capture some questions. Uh, do the West, since this is, seems to be based on Eastern time for the live sessions, do the West Coast teachers ever get a chance to participate in the chat? Well, we host our webinars generally from 3 to 6 in the mm -hmm. afternoon East Coast time. So we do have people on the West Coast um, talk about it not always being so convenient, but everything is recorded. Sure. And um, I think for some of those 3 o'clock sessions, maybe there's an opportunity to watch at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. But we do really do our events mainly from 3 to 6 on East Coast time. And I think this has already been answered. Is there a list of the different communities in EdWeb to choose from? Is that only accessible once? somebody's a member? No, right on our home page, edweb.net, you know, there's a link at the top of the page to join communities. Mm -hmm. And there's a list there of all of the communities that we're involved in where we're hosting free webinars. Oh, OK. Great. Um, how do you find the calendar for EdWeb, the Google Calendar? Same thing on edweb.net. Um, right up at the top, it says, uh, I think it says, view the calendar. Mm -hmm. Uh, or view webinars, and there's also a link on the page. I think it's pretty easy to find on our home page. Great. There, there weren't many questions that were not addressed during the show. That's as, okay. that's as many as, as I was able to ca capture. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. I'm going to turn this over to Peggy now for the upcoming shows. I'm going to jump on right here and just do a real quick preview of coming attractions. Um, we have some great shows lined up um, coming up every Saturday, same time, same place. Next week, we have the amazing Google guru, Lisa Thuman, joining us. And she's going to be sharing about ways to use Google Drive and Google Classroom. And I'm sure she'll slip in a lot of other Google tips along the way. We won't have a show on Thanksgiving weekend in the US, since all of us will be with our families. Um, but we'll be back on December 6th with a great Hour of Code show we're planning for you, because that is the beginning of the week of the Hour of Code. So I know that many of you are going to be participating in that. On December 13th, we're going to have Steven Anderson coming to share Class Flow with us. That is an amazing tool. And I first learned about that on an EdWeb webinar. And I was so impressed that I said, Steven, you have to come and share that with our group. So he will be with us on December 13th. 
Then we're going to take a break over the hol uh, winter um, holiday time, and we'll be back on January 10th for our sixth anniversary. We are already up to like three, close to 300 webinars on Classroom 2.0 Live, and we have a great celebration planned to thank all of our presenters, play some games, and just have a good time. There'll be some raffle tickets for drawings, too, so I hope you'll join us there. I also want to be sure and let you know, if you're not aware of the Global Education Conference, it is coming. Next week is going to be a fabulous week of learning. The Global Education Conference has like at least 30 keynotes, and they also have 250 plus sessions, and they are available all day, every day. They go 24-7, so no matter which time zone you're in, you will find something for you, and everything is recorded, and you can go back and listen to things that you are interested in but may have missed. So be sure to check that out Monday through Friday, every day next week. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to Lori just to Thank you, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Targadon's newest endeavor. He has gathered together all of his PD resources in one place, including the Host Your Own Webinar series. If you would like to run a Blackboard Collaborate session with a group. As long as you make your session public, you don't have to pay for the room. It's, it's a free webinar room. This slide reminds you that you can nominate a featured teacher. And we have a featured teacher usually each month. And you can fill out the form at tinyurl.com slash cr20live featured teacher nominate without the e at the end. Uh, and you can nominate yourself also for the Featured Teacher of the Month. As you leave the session, your browser should open the Classroom 2.0 Live survey. If it doesn't, you can take the link that will be in the chat and complete the link or the, the survey from there. Or you can find the link in the Live Binder in the CR20 Live resources. So there are three different ways to get the survey. At the bottom of the survey, you will find fields to fill in for professional development certificate. And these will arrive now with your name on the certificate. Uh, please, though, when you request one, request it sent to a personal email address rather than a school email address, because school addresses tend to block this. The audio and video collection for, for the archives are available at iTunes U. And here's the link, tinyurl.com slash cr20live iTunes U. So you can listen with a mobile device or watch with a mobile device. The show archives are also accessible through the RSS feed link on the website itself. Special thanks again to Lisa Schmucky, Rachel Langenhorst, Michelle Lutala, Shannon Holden, and Peggy George, to Steve Hargadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for, for providing our website, and everyone who participated in today's show. Thank you so much. <laughs>